When running a virtual machine, we always talk about assigning a GPU. But right here in front of me, I have a Radeon 295X2, a dual GPU card from early 2014. But that's not all. I have another one of these. So in this video, we'll try to assign four GPUs to a single virtual machine. But first we'll take a look at their bare metal performance and then we'll compare it to their performance in QEMU. Yes, I'll be using QEMU and not Libvirt and Virtual Machine Manager. When looking at the results, keep in mind that we are running with a mild overclock and uh, the exact details can be seen in the description. So we can see that the graphics score is very respectable at 15,399. We are uh, better than 94% uh, of results. And when we look at hardware channel and compare it to other current GPUs, we can see that our four aging GPUs are achieving better scores than any single GPU out there. Enough about bare metal performance, time to move on. But first, let's take a look at our host system. The host will be using a GTX 980. The guest will be using the two Radeons. They'll both be plugged into PCI Express slots running at by 8 configuration. And for storage, the guest will use a Samsung 960 EVO. The bare metal Windows was using an Intel drive because the Samsung drive is not bootable on this board. So let's start up the machine. I'll be measuring the power draw and also recording the noise level. So you will hear the gentle hum of the fans. If you want to follow my guides, I will leave the link in the description, but here I'll proceed on hyperspeed. The only difference is that I will manually specify VFIO-PCI.IDs because the secondary GPU on each card is not taken over by VFIO-PCI by default and has to be specified. Now let's take a look at our IOMMU groups. So we'll be using IOMMU Viewer for this. Link is in the description. Here is the first card with the first GPU on it and the audio portion and the second GPU on the first card. Here we have the second card with the first GPU, audio and the second GPU on the second card. So total of four GPUs right here. We also have four USB controllers available. All of these are onboard controllers and they are all in their own IOMMU groups. Perfect for pass-through. As you can see, this board has a really good IOMMU layout, and that's generally true for all X79, 99, and 299 motherboards. Those are great for GPU pass-through. Okay, so let's take a look at our uh, virtual machine startup script. We won't be using virtual machine manager here. We'll be using old school QEMU, just like our old school hardware. So right here, we'll open our run.sh. Let's make it full screen. So first, we'll, we bind our NVMe drive and our USB controller to the VFIO driver. And to do that, we use this script. So we call this script bind it and these we bind at runtime as opposed to the GPUs which are bound at startup and the reason for this is uh, GPUs generally are pretty difficult to deal with uh, you know removing or unbinding from their own driver and binding them to VFIO-PCI whereas other devices are pretty easy to deal with so we bind our USB and NVMe here here is our system, 16 gigs of RAM, UEFI BIOS, four cores, two threads, uh, and that's okay. We are running a six core processor, so that should be fine. We are booting from a Windows 10 ISO. So here's the interesting portion. The Radeon 295X2 is pretty difficult to pass through. So we have to convince it that it's plugged into a 
uh, PCI Express root port. Here, here it is. The IOH 3420. And so this would be our first GPU on the first card, second GPU on the first card, audio portion right here, 5.001. Here we go to the second card on the third slot basically, or slot number two. And lastly, we have the last uh, GPU, so second GPU on the second card right here and our NVMe and USB controllers. One thing will change is the VGA will change that to, well, we'll actually start with a virtualized GPU first. And the reason is because uh, at first we don't really get any output from the Radeons until we actually install the driver. So let's save that. We'll install Windows. Let's uh, change directory to, it's under virtual, and let's make it executable, chmod plus x, and run, and vfio bind, and let's run it. Oh, super user, and Let's run it now. It will take a bit to start. Let's download the AMD driver. Okay, let's shut it down. And let's edit this out. This pound sign. Save it. And let's start our virtual machine again. And this time we should get full screen output from our HDMI. Well, in this case, DVI connected to an HDMI adapter. So I changed it to that output. And pretty soon we'll hopefully see our startup. So here we are. Let's open up our Radeon driver. Okay, let's see, and Crossfire is enabled. And uh, before we start, let's overclock our GPUs a little bit. Okay, that's that. I'll download Steam and 3D Mark, and then we'll run the benchmark. So finally, we are running 3D Mark in a virtual machine. Keep an eye on that power meter. It goes as high as 1500 watts, which is super impressive. We have four Radeons and a GTX 980 that's idling in the host. And I picked 3D Mark because it scales really well, even with four GPUs. That can be said about many other applications. Yeah, generally, when you run more than two GPUs, Crossfire and SLI, they scale really poorly and there are very few exceptions where they actually perform well and 3D Mark would be one of them. Usually it's the benchmarks where the scaling is the best. And that's one reason why multi-GPU isn't that popular. So the score is in and in terms of the graphics score, we are about 2000 points and some short of our bare metal score. So. Part of that is due to the virtual machine. And another reason is that these GPUs are only running at by eight PCI Express configuration. Whereas our bare metal setup was running by 16 for both GPUs. So there is some loss due to that. So first let's take a look what the bare metal performance would look like if we ran them at by eight configuration and then we'll move on to optimizing our virtual machine. So here we are looking at the bare metal run where the GPUs are using by eight configuration and we can see that our graphics score went up about 800 points. We can also see that our CPU score 
actually dropped. So the number one reason for that is I disabled two cores just to match the core count of the virtual machine, but we are even lower than the four core virtual machine. Why is that? Well, the virtual machine being assigned four cores and two threads each might actually be scheduled by the host to run on the actual cores rather than the hyper-threaded ones and hence we are seeing a higher performance there whereas the bare metal machine only has access to four real cores so let's get back to improving the performance of our virtual machine i added these enlightenments to make it run better i tried some other ones too but i don't feel like they helped so i ended up with these few that i think had the most impact on the performance. There is a link in the description that explains what they do. So another thing I did, I uh, put the NVMe drive and the uh, USB controller on the root port, but that doesn't help the performance. It just looks more consistent. So let's start our virtual machine and let's run the benchmark. So the results are in and the graphics score pretty much matches the bare metal windows. Any differences are, I think, only due to the random variance. The CPU score is higher for the virtual machine because I'm suspecting it's getting scheduled to run on physical cores, additional physical cores, as opposed to the bare metal, which only has access to four cores because I disabled two cores. Those are pretty good results. I think we can be happy with that. And there is only one more thing to do, and that is to run our 3D mark in the virtual machine concurrently with Unigine Valley in the host machine. Let's see what scores we achieve in that scenario. So instead of capturing each input individually, I'm just pointing my camera at the two monitors, one connected to the host, one connected to the guest, and each one is running one of the benchmarks. And in the top right corner, there is the power meter measuring the power consumption of this creation. And at some points it reaches over 1600 watts. So by itself at start, the host with the 980 loaded uh, pulls like 700 watts. As soon as the Radeon, Radeons kick in, uh, yeah, it's another 900 watts on top of that. So uh, pretty impressive, runs pretty well, and let's take a look at the results. So the results are in. In the Union Valley, we scored 2,049 points, which isn't spectacular, but we only had two cores dedicated to the host, and it ran concurrently with 3D Mark in the guest. The guest, on the other hand, scored much more respectable 12,057, which still beats an RTX 2080, which is pretty decent. The overall score is also pretty good, 9,167, and the CPU score was this time affected because the host was also occupied and there were no longer two physical cores available for the guests to use. So overall, it was a pretty fun experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.